Good afternoon, good evening. We've got a fun webinar here from you today with Effusion and our good friends at ANSYS. We're gonna discuss about the forthcoming. It is coming. We think in a few more months, SAE and EuroK will simultaneously release the new version, the one we've been waiting for, B. Yeah, we had 54, 54A today, and soon 54B. It's really going to emphasize model-based systems engineering and safety analysis, especially with the new 4761A. I'm with my colleague, Niels, right now, and we're just gonna do a quick sound test Good afternoon in Germany, Europe there. Niels, can you hear me okay? Yes, thanks. Hi, Vance. Hi, all. Fantastic. Let me give a little introduction about our companies and then processes, the standards. Then we'll give you a cool demo and some background information. This is going to be very useful for all of your aviation projects coming up real soon, okay? We're gonna talk about real briefly five minutes we're gonna summarize the aviation ecosystem. Then we're gonna talk about ARP 4754A and 4761, but the new versions, B and A. There's some small changes, but they're significant. How do they affect you? Then Niels is gonna discuss Medini Analyze, how that fits into the ecosystem, safety assessments, aircraft and systems engineering. He'll talk about fault trees, component-based as a solution to model-based safety assessments. Then we'll open up with a quick conclusion and Q&A for five or 10 minutes, okay? Now, a quick introduction on Effusion. We are the world's largest dedicated purely aviation certification services company. If you're on a commercial airplane, you use our systems and our software. We work with over three-fourths of the world's largest aircraft systems companies Companies use our processes, our templates out of the box for software, hardware, safety systems, our training, our mentoring, our certification. We work worldwide in many different areas. I think all of you know Effusion, so let me have Niels tell you about ANSYS. Niels, go ahead. Yes, thanks. So ANSYS is, was founded as an engineering simulation software company. Uh, with finite, finite element methods, FEM and fluid simulations. And with time, we became now as the number one in simulation. So we claim that we are the broad, have the broadest, deepest, and most accurate engineering simulation product portfolio. Um, and, and you also see then along the timeline that we had a lot of strategic acquisitions to broaden our portfolio. And in 2016, uh, Medini was acquired, uh, which is a leading safety analysis tool at the time for automotive. Um, so the company Ensys uh, understood uh, early that safety analysis is a key competence to support also uh, for the whole systems approach. And since several years, we also focus on the aerospace market and nowadays support all the methods uh, relevant for ARP 4761. Very good. Thank you, Niels. Very impressive. Folks, let's take a look at aviation safety. Let's summarize that. Now, today we're going to talk about 4761 and 61A, the new version. But look how this fits with the ecosystem. In the upper left here is the safety assessment. That's where we start. That's where we determine through the functional hazard assessment the DAO, the development assurance level, is it level A, B, C, D? And then safety requirements, how much fault processing, built-in test, pilot alerts, maintenance, installation, air processing, air management. Those become safety and system requirements that we feed into the aircraft system process interactively. That's done via 4754A and now soon, 54B. For that, we have eight plans. We have standards, there's checklists, and many companies throughout the world buy their templates from Effusion and their training. In fact, we're doing a training this week on these topics. After we define the aircraft and system requirements through a preliminary system safety assessment, aircraft and system level, then we allocate requirements to 
the DOs, or in Europe, ED, European document, or simply document in the US. There's many different guidelines for software, hardware, IMA, aeronautical data, but it's also related to advisory circulars and technical standard orders. So this is the ecosystem. It's not a restaurant menu. You know, you go to the restaurant. Maybe you get a coffee, a little sugar. I don't use sugar. Different menu. This is not a menu. We don't choose. But an idea. Could a tool, a product from ANSYS help us with this? Oh, you're going to see. Well, what we have to consider is the V model. This is, yes, aviation, avionics, ecosystem. This is development, V model, top to bottom, bottom to top. As we first start with the aircraft requirements, then the systems, and then we define the systems, develop hardware software requirements, and then we implement. We verify subsystem, system, and aircraft, top down, bottom up. These are the various safety assessments that need to be performed. Aircraft, FHA, preliminary aircraft, well, yeah. If you want more information, download from the Fusion website the free white paper on ARP 4761, 4754. There's two of them, okay? Now, the safety assessment process is rather detailed. Which one of these steps is most important? They all are. This slide clarifies the preceding slide, remember? Top down, bottom up, aircraft system, subsystem. Well, this shows the various safety assessments that need to be performed. As you can see, it's a little complex. <laughs> the boundaries hmm, are defined by you as you develop your aircraft, your system, your components, your devices, your software, hardware. Nobody develops everything, and that's the challenge, you see. Because there's so many different companies, people involved in all these processes, how do you manage all of these interfaces for the safety assessment? Okay, we don't have time to describe all these. If you need more information, download from Effusion the ARP 4761 white paper. It's free or come to one of our trainings. Now, the safety assessment, the big picture, you have a concept. If you're a device, a software, a component, subsystem, system, aircraft, you have preliminary design, detailed, and then you implement, validate, and verify. So we have a functional hazard assessment at the aircraft level, the system level, the different fault trees. Oh, and Niels is going to tell you about this and how you can automate, manage all those complex interfaces. Got it? So, that safety assessment process in 4761, it starts top down and ends bottom up. So look at me. Yeah. Top down, FHA, PASA, PSSA, and then bottom up, SSA, FAMIA, closed loop, top down, bottom up. Got it? So we start top down, FHA. What are the potential failures? What are the effects? What's the severity? Level A, catastrophic. Level D, minor. Or in between, level A, B, C, D. And then for each phase of flight, taxi, takeoff, initial climb, flaps down. Final climb, flaps up. Are you a pilot? Yeah, I'm a pilot. We care about this stuff. Then we develop the PASA, preliminary. Let's propose the architecture, let's propose the systems. Let's understand the interrelationships of safety, okay? It's called a preliminary assessment throughout the project. Think about that. It's preliminary throughout the project. It's never final, why? Well, it's always updated continuously until certification. So let's remind us of that. Let's remind you, me, it's preliminary. But then, after we have the design, let's evaluate the systems, the interfaces, 
the actual components, failure mode effect analysis, MTBF, mean time between failure, my reliability, have I met it? But consider throughout development, common cause analysis, okay? Installation, particular risks, zonal safety assessment, ooh, single point failure, are we really redundant? Ah, now, there's an evolution, it's coming. That's why you're watching this. What's coming with the new version 4761A? Well, we need to put more emphasis on unintended behavior at the requirements level, validation, the verification level, continuous feedback. When you do root cause analysis of a mishap, a crash, an accident, we think, what could have gone wrong? What did go wrong? Well, here we want to avoid the crash. We want to avoid RCA by thinking about unintended behavior in advance. But also think about this. Are you working on an all new aircraft, an all new system? Congratulations, we can help you with that. Most of you aren't. Most of you are making modifications. Most of a fusion's work is modifications of existing aircraft, existing systems. Oh, we work on eVTOL, new UAVs, new aircraft, but 80% of our work is modifying something that previously existed. Well, there's been many modifications of aircraft. <clears throat> Are you reapplying the safety assessment? If you do that manually, how do we track that? Manual safety assessments today in 2024? Ooh. So increased responsibility for aircraft integrators, but they don't have the insight into many of your systems, your components, subsystem devices. You need to provide additional information, that insight, white box, open up. How do you fit into the safety scene? Can you prove all interrelated aircraft systems are safe? Ah, that is 4761A. So let me introduce you to my good friend and colleague, Niels. Niels has many years of expertise, okay? He really is an expert, and he's gonna tell you about Medini Analyze, okay? So here's Niels, he's gonna take it over, tell you about Medini Analyze. Niels, you're officially the presenter, it's all yours. Okay, thanks, Vince. Just check that I get the transmission right from off my screen. It looks perfect. You can see it now? Perfect. Okay, good. So let's dive into Medini. First, let me give you an overview of Medini Analyze. It's an integrated model-based tool for both product safety and cybersecurity analysis. For safety, it provides all relevant safety analysis methods like FHA, FMEA, FAMICA, FTA, supports common cause analysis and SSA compliance demonstration, following many different safety standards, in particular ARP 4761A for airborne systems. For cybersecurity, the full security risk assessment activities are supported by dedicated templates according to the DO356A standard, extended by Appendix E, Effectiveness for Protection Calculation Utilizing Attack Trees. Providing this in the same tool, safety and cybersecurity analysis can directly interface in an integrated way. On top of that detailed analysis work, the Digital Safety Manager allows an easy overview of the status of multiple safety analysis across different projects and subsystems of a portfolio for management purposes directly accessible via browser. In this presentation, we will focus on the safety analysis features of Medini and how it supports the soon expected release of ARP 4761A. In the center of the safety analysis, there is the system model of the product under analysis. It can range from a simple list of functions and high-level blocks to a detailed system model 
with every single piece of software and hardware represented. Models can be created and edited directly within Medini, but also imported from external link modeling tools like Skate Architect, Cameo Systems Modeler, Rhapsody, or Enterprise Architect. Medini is set up as a very open tool with many interfaces to import and export data. This applies not only to the central system model, but especially the safety requirements with bi-directional interface to requirements management systems and also all other analysis types as shown for aerospace applications. From guide word analysis based on the system functions, we have Mika and Fortree analysis up to the safety case compliance demonstration. Overall, the analysis in Medini heavily benefits from being all connected and synchronized with the system model, ensuring consistency and full traceability. In the following sections, you will see a live demonstration of the Medini tool using a vertical takeoff and landing example delivered with Medini. The tool demonstration will cover typical steps of a safety analysis project as listed here on this slide. During the presentation, I will highlight any features relevant to changes in the soon to be released ARP 4761A. Normal or traditional board trees will be shown, whereas the new component four trees for model-based safety analysis will be explained at a later point of this presentation. So let's have a look at Medini. This is Medini. On the left side, you see the model browser with the VTOL safety analysis demo project. Here at Medini, you can see the diagram of a model imported from the SysML tool Skate Architect visible as a tag in the model browser. Also, other system modeling tools can be interfaced for SysML import, for example, Cameo, Rhapsody, or Adapas Architect. After an import and update functionality, the capture changes is available in the context menu. All the different diagram elements are model elements which are shown in the model browser on the left side in a tree structure. In a separate SysML model, for better overview, is the list of functions. They can be displayed on diagrams, visualizing the connections between them. With this list of functions, as a starting point of the safety analysis, we will initiate the guide word analysis. Looking at all relevant functions, one can identify possible malfunctions based on certain keywords, here as recommended by ARP 4761A. Creation is simple by typing in a new malfunction name, which will create the malfunction object below the related function. As a next step, we will look at the important function hazard analysis. It identifies the failure conditions of the project together with their possible effects and classifications. ARP 4761 revision A describes the failure condition identification with more detail on using malfunctions and loss of function than in the past. This is directly supported by Medini already. Failure conditions can be created one to one for each malfunction or by splitting them up due to flight conditions, in this example named base of operation, or by combining multiple malfunctions into one failure condition. Alternatively, failure conditions could be created completely without malfunctions. Medini is flexible for that. Also, the effects can be listed. And based on that, the failure condition classification and the related function development is level. We also have the resulting safety requirements listed, which are there to capture for example, the rate and the no single failure requirement for catastrophic classification. These FHA safety requirements are stored as a collection and can be viewed in a table showing more details besides the names like descriptions or decisions on the plant analysis for verification. The development rooms levels are of course very important. FDAL and IDAL assignments is not new in the ARP documents, but moves with the new releases from ARP 4754, 
A to ARP 4761A. Medini implements the DAL assignment via DAL attributes of all system model elements and requirements and supports the user via calculated values from all connected artifacts, like in this gray column. Detailed functional failure set member assignments can also use the forgery feature of Medini. On traceability, we can see the failure conditions using these safety requirements and the traces to the forgery analysis helping to verify these requirements. We will now get to this part of the safety analysis using the example loss of multiple lift units for creating the fault tree analysis. The fault tree analysis as a deductive or top-down failure analysis starts at the failure condition as a top event and identify causes and especially combinations of causes for a Boolean logic trees. It is and will be one of the most important methods for platform or system-wide safety analysis. This is why Medini supports FTA in a rigorous and powerful manner, capable of analyzing also extremely large fault trees. They can be created directly in Medini, but also imported from existing library workbench or Kafka fault trees when switching to Medini. Also other FTA formats can be imported via scripting. Traditionally, fault trees have been created completely by hand using the safety engineer's knowledge and experience. As the resulting fortries are sometimes massive and difficult to maintain, we also support more modern ways to help automating fortry creation towards model-based safety analysis. I will explain more about component fortries a little later. Nevertheless, also these are an extension to traditional fortries, which are therefore still absolutely necessary. We also have, a quite, have quite a few customers who have already their own approaches to generate some parts of the fortries via Medini scripting capabilities. To show some of the fortree features of Medini, here you can see a fortree diagram of the real propulsive failure failure condition. The top event represents the failure condition itself, as you can see via the symbol in front of the name and the related elements context menu. It is also connected to the safety requirements for the failure rate and the no single failure requirement for later usage by the tool in the compliance table. In this example, the forgery mostly consists of a voting gate for a single propulsor failure leading via transfer gates to the subtrees from another forgery, which includes also the base events. The important aspect here is that the base events, again, represent model elements like failure modes, accessible wire related elements, from which they can carry over failure rate information. Maybe initially as a budget, later a concrete failure rate information from catalogs or other sources. We will look at that later. This four tree can then be evaluated to see if there are common failure modes or what is the most critical contribution. In the evaluation result, you can see at the top failure rate information calculated in line with different standards. Here, the worst case and average probabilities according to ARP 4761A over time and absolute with the exact calculations of Medini with binary decision diagrams. Approximations are also available. Below, the list of minimal cut sets is shown, listing the order of the cut set, the member events, and amongst others, the importance. Also for the events, different, different importance measures are available on a separate tab. After saving the results, you can see additional properties like represented model elements and related requirements, which we come to in a minute. To better understand the cut sets within the forgery and architecture, Medini has some heat map features, one of which highlights the events in the forgery diagram, also across diagrams, as well as the represented model elements in the physical architecture. To generate a safety requirement 
for the, in this example, obvious single point failure, you can go to the problematic event in the for tree and derive a new requirement. Note that Medina uses derive in the systems engineering meaning for generating new dependent artifacts like related requirements, variants, FMEAs, etc. That's different to the ARP 4761 meaning of a derived requirement. The new safety requirement is created in a safety requirements collection. When we go there via the traces to the requirement, we see the just created requirement, or we look at the already prepared requirement. It has a more detailed description, the expected required analysis, and the rationale already available. It also has an automatic trace available back to the portfolio event in order to provide full traceability throughout the analysis. To enhance the prediction of the board fee, the next step would be to do parts-based FAMICA, also to get more detailed failure rate information. Medini supports creation of FMEAs and FAMICAs by various features. As a first step, one can derive a FAMICA sheet based on an existing architecture. In our case, we use the lift control system to generate an FMEA worksheet, which will then create a worksheet based on all the parts of the model. I quickly configure the layout of the FAMICA towards the still often used MIL standard 1629A. Now, on the left side of the worksheet, all model elements are automatically listed, completely in sync with the system model, so you cannot forget a part even after model update. You see that many columns are already filled because the information is contained in the system model and the included failure modes and effect chains. Of course, this is only so complete because the analysis was already done before in this sheet. Now also with the columns only contained in the Vermica sheet itself. In the columns, you can see the part failure rates which are gray here, because they have been already defined in the model for these parts based on an integrated NPRD failure rate catalog. Other catalogs available are, for example, EPRD, Mill Handbook 217, Siemens Norm 29500, or IEC 61709. The rates can also be manually defined coming from other sources. Further right, you see the parts failure modes, which were defined not individually for the single parts, but for the part types. In this case, the type motor, which is then used for all motor instances. All this helps to reduce work and avoids copy and paste. And also the failure modes themselves are model elements. The part failure rates are then further broken down by percentages and factors with the failure modes and finally with the assigned failure effects. Both failure modes as well as failure effects can, from this table can be used in the board tree. When using the effects, the failure rates will be summed up across all usages, representing the FMES methodology of ARP 4761A. Traceability is automatically given, of course. Note that in the background, the effect connections are used to create cause and effect networks, as you can see here. These views are dynamic and can be even used as editors. Therefore, the cascading effects analysis, CEA, from ARP 4761A can be done completely with these cause and effect networks from initiating condition to all end effects. On common cause analysis as a basis, Medini supports the analyst via extensive checklists, which are based on ARP 4761A. More of them can be added and also adjusted for further analysis. As CCAs are in many cases very individual beyond the general guidelines. 
Medini, in addition, can support you with customized analysis using its customization and scripting features, especially if system data within Medini can be made use of. For example, listing final effects of the, all the parts identified by a 3D model in a particular risk analysis of an uncontained engine failure. Such feature can reduce analysis time a lot. Finally, we will look at the compliance table for the system safety assessment. It is a collection of all the requirements which you will need to show compliance to, which can be selected or drag and dropped from the model. The compliance table takes all the necessary information from the requirements text and the related fault tree top events and shows in summary if the required failure rates are fulfilled by the calculated failure rates. Here, all check marks should become green, but in our example, many are red. So more work is to be done by either changing the system, as with our previous redundancy requirement, or by refining the safety analysis on potential conservatism. Now, I would like to come back to the topic of component fault trees. We see them as a solution for MBSA. Model-based safety analysis is a new topic of the ARP 4761A, and it talks about generating safety analysis artifacts from failure propagation models, containing a lot of safety-related information. We at ANSYS believe that four trees or other deductive analysis shouldn't be created completely automatic, as this would take out an important safety engineer's analysis input and might skip manual, but important review. Instead, our approach of component fault trees, or CFTs, adds deductive failure information to the architecture elements in the system model, which can then be used to heavily simplify fault trees by modularization and thus repetition avoidance. Now let's first have a look at how traditional fault tree analysis does modularization. If you want to split the fault tree on the left into different modules, you can introduce a transfer gate and move the marked parts into a separate subtree. This is what was done in the earlier fault tree demonstration as well. Important to note is that the subtree has to be completely independent. It can only be reused via another transfer gate if the same base event inputs E2 to E4 are relevant for the usage. If the same structure is needed, but with different inputs, there's no alternative to copying and pasting the whole subtree. When we now look at how component four trees do modularization, we can see that the subcomponent one on the left side is split into a separate diagram, but it does not include the complete subtree. The connection towards the E3, E4 AND gate is not contained in the component, but instead an input has been defined for component one. Therefore, the subcomponent can be used in multiple situations with different inputs from base events or subtrees. This additional flexibility is key to the usage of CFTs in system architectures. Before we go into more details, let's have a look at the terminology used for CFTs, which is aligned with definitions and usages in System L2. On the left side, you see the component or CFT definition, which defines the input and output interfaces, as well as the internal fault tree as the contents of the component. On the right side, you see a fault tree which uses CFT usages. In this case, the controller is used in two instances, one as a main controller and one as an auxiliary controller, both with independent CPUs. The outputs are used towards the upper end gate. The inputs at the bottom use, in this case, the same power unit, but they can also be different inputs. This independence of the inputs is a big advantage because you can now use the CFT definition similar to an architecture type, like the motor type shown before, which was used for all four individual motors. Therefore, we actually store the CFT definitions 
within the related system L architecture elements. On the next few slides, I will show you how powerful these CFTs are for forgery modeling of a complex system. In this example, which is different to the VTOL in the first part of the presentation, we have an unmanned air vehicle failure condition analyzed for crash into ground. Reasons can be insufficient lift and loss of controllability. The UAV uses four individual rotor units. Instead of having a large detailed fault tree with transfer gates or paging, we see a single fault tree component connected to the intermediate events. Here is the CFT definition of the single fault tree component on the previous slide. At the top, there are four CFT usages representing the rotor units. Further below, you see the, the com control computer, an integrated monitoring unit, and a battery. As the rotor units use identical battery inputs, there are several transfer gates contained, as Medini currently uses these for identical inputs. We will now look into one level deeper into the rotor unit CFT definition. In the component for the rotor unit, you see vertically stacked the more detailed CFT usages for the subparts of the rotor unit. I guess you can see the difference of the component for tree modeling to the traditional 14 analysis. In this example, the details of the inverter are similarly complex in both cases, but it is only modeled once and reused multiple times. In a traditional forgery, the inverter logic would be represented in the forgery four times as a copy. This forgery diagram was generated from an early, still high-level component forgery. Any inverter details weren't included yet. With such details present, this diagram would even be much larger, containing multiple copies. Transfer gates would not help because base events as inputs would differ for each physically separate inverter. Especially the maintenance of the component forgery is much easier than in a traditional forgery, as it is only done once for every design change at a single place. Let's now look at the CFT example in Medina. Here you see again the top level fault tree diagram with a single fault tree component. When I double click in there, you see the diagram containing the four rotor units, control computer, battery. Jumping further into the rotor unit and from there into the inverter, you see the component definition of the inverter fault tree. We now look at the position of the fault tree component in the model browser. You can see that the CFT is included within the inverter itself, which is part of the rotor unit type. So the definition only exists once in the whole model, and it is fully aligned with the modernization and typing approach used for architecture model itself. SysML version 2.0, which is the upcoming SysML standard with many system model en enhancements compared to the current SysML 1.0, is already supported by Medini for the most stable parts of the standard. In terms of the fault tree evaluation and its results, CFTs behave identical to traditional fault trees as CFT usages within the, the fault tree are converted into normal fault tree before computation. This approach to model-based safety analysis is very aligned and compatible to increasingly available architecture modeling from model-based systems engineering without losing the valuable input and review of the safety analyst. And uh, after the presentation of Medini, I would like to invite you as well to our digital safety conference. We have one in Berlin on 10th of October and one uh, in Detroit, yes, on the 14th of November. So there are, it is about safety, cyber security, embedded software development, and also system simulation. And uh, you see the logos of the aviation presenters. There are more from other industries like automotive and um, industry. I'll pick these out for you. 
So um, please uh, go to our website and, and register if you're interested. And after two years of being remote, it's now um, an in-person event. Okay, Benz, do you want to take over? Very good. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Neil. That was a really good presentation. So folks, to summarize here, 4761 is not a restaurant menu. <laughs> it's not optional. The new A version absolutely will apply to all commercial aircraft. And a Fusion's also working on many military aircraft. Interestingly, projects such as the new future long range attack aircraft by the US Army, the world's largest current uh, aircraft development and production about $50 billion is using 4761, you see? So even militaries worldwide are using it. Model-based systems engineering, as Niels and Ansa showed you, really is the future. Come on, you're, you're making changes. Changes are major, changes are minor, but they have major potential impacts. Do you really want to do that manually? Medini Analyzer is a terrific option, and we think the best option for tomorrow but good news, it's available today. Just contact Niels. If you want more information on a fusion, well, you know where we are. Pop out your smartphone and do a little QR action. Or if more information on Medini Analyze, go to the conference that Niels told you about, or check out the QR code there. Right now, we're gonna open up for questions and answers.